So I will go ahead with my presentation, and I will start by uh, uh, declaring that I have no conflict of interest to declare. Okay, so going back to the concept of epidemic preparedness according to the international health regulation, so over the last few days, there's been many a presentation on the topic, and so just to go back to the, the basics, uh, epidemic preparedness can be defined as the capacity to detect, assess, and notify report events, and the capacity to respond promptly and effectively to public health risk and public health emergencies uh, of international concern. Uh, going back to the Ebola epidemic, a lot has been learned, and mostly, it's been realized that health threats have no border. As uh, Dr. Ken Gasson uh, said uh, two days ago, uh, a, risk, uh, a risk somewhere is a risk everywhere. Uh, an emergency somewhere is an emergency everywhere. And hence, there is a need to reinforce global health security through regular communication across countries and also uh, through reinforcement of capacity to be able to respond to those uh, emergencies. So the Global Health Security Agenda is a mechanism which has been put in place uh, in order to accelerate implementation of the international health regulation requirements. It relies on a framework uh, which has three components, the prevention component, the detection component, and the response uh, component. As part of the detection components, there are, uh, ele uh, there are um, relevant action packages, and those uh, relevant to the laboratory, uh, functional laboratory uh, networks, real-time surveillance and reporting, and uh, system and workforce reinforcement. These are the ones that actually are part of this presentation, will be the topic. And so looking at na national uh, public health systems, um, there are key issues with public health uh, laboratory in sub-Saharan Africa. So this is a map which goes back to 2014 and was looking at the, um, the presence of, of accredited lab throughout sub-Saharan Africa. And so we could see, looking at the map, that there are quite uh, a, a regional disparities. So you can have accredited lab where actually PEPFAR has been active and a lot of reinforcement has been done. And then you have areas where there is a desert and no uh, accredited uh, laboratory at the time. So there was really uh, issues going on. And those issues have been uh, underlined by uh, presenters uh, which are among us, and uh, not to name them, so Dr. Oni Bujo. And so, um, among the main uh, issues that were uh, identified, there were, first of all, under-resourced infrastructure and equipment, poor laboratory linkages to clinical services, meaning that the lab results were not used to inform clinical decision-making and uh, patient treatment, poor laboratory quality control and assurance systems, a paucity of leadership to provide adequate policy intervention, technical guidance and supportive supervision, and on the first day it was mentioned also ownership and financial commitment from member states. Inadequate or absent uh, national laboratory network. And so to put this into context now, Africa CDC as part of its five pillars has a focus area on laboratory system and, and networks. Uh, it's been uh, mentioned before that Africa CDC is promoting a regional integrated uh, surveillance and laboratory uh, network throughout Africa, which are regionally um, dispatched, so to speak, and they aim to improve endemic disease surveillance alert and response mechanism while relying on national capacity uh, at the national level for surveillance and laboratory. At the same time, Resolve to Save Life is a five-year campaign which is funded by the Bloomberg uh, Philanthropies, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And it works with government in low- and middle-income countries to implement evidence-based tools in order to strengthen the key areas which are needed to improve capacity and preparedness. They have a component which is the laboratory core, and it's the resolve to prevent epidemic. It aims to support a laboratory network in emerging um, um, low- and middle-income countries, sorry, uh, in order that they are better uh, capacitated to uh, detect, 
uh, and hence uh, um, facilitate response against new and emerging uh, pathogens. So as part of this uh, common interest, uh, Africa CDC and Resolve to Save Life decided to join effort in order to sustain health security for all and facilitate the development and implementation of proven um, evidence-based uh, innovation and intervention, which uh, can lead to the reinforcement of capacity in uh, target countries. So the main objective of the collaboration is to strengthen quality management and uh, specimen referral systems in public health laboratories in network in Africa. It will be targeting five countries selected as part of the ResolNet to improve capacity and preparedness. And it's focusing on the two um, indicators of the detect core area of the global health security agenda, namely uh, indicator D1.2, which is a specimen referral and transport system, and also indicator one, uh, D1.4, which is quality management system. So the project governance is highlighted uh, on that slide. So on the top, at the regional level, you have overall uh, coordination mechanism, also um, resource mobilization and high-level engagement from country. So this is being done by Africa CDC. Uh, project oversight and um, evaluation of countries is being done by two project consultants and also with the assistance of ASLM. At the country level, we will have implementation of project activities. So this is done by implementing partners. So we have one implementing partner by target country and also with in-country actors. And so it's relying mostly on mentorship, training, um, knowledge sharing around best practices. So we are using a cascade model, whereby in the first stage we will be with the assistance of implementing partners, um, reinforcing Ministry of Health, for example, the laboratory directorate, uh, also the National Public Health Institute, where there is one or the National Reference Lab. In the second stage, once those actors have been capacitated, they will lead uh, the way to reinforce the peripheral level labs. So the specific objectives of the project are to develop a roadmap for quality management system and si specimen transport system in five selected member states based on identified public health gap and needs with regard to outbreak response. In the second stage, we will support reference laboratory in the selected member state using um, SLIPTA and SLAMTA, so um, step, uh, stepwise laboratory improvement uh, towards accreditation and strengthening laboratory management towards accreditation uh, for uh, strengthening the QMS, so quality management system. We will also develop a framework for biological specimen transfer um, referral system within the country and also across states uh, regionally. And then we will uh, aim to have a strong monitoring and evaluation uh, framework for the project. So with regard to the first objective, how are we getting there? So the first point is uh, to look at uh, the joint external evaluation. So it's been presented by uh, the previous presenter and also uh, uh, other uh, presenter uh, in the previous day, notably uh, Dr. Ambrose from the WHO. And so it's a process available for the evaluation of countries, capacity to prevent, detect, and respond rapidly to public health threat. And it measures country-specific status and progress towards implementing uh, international health regulations uh, targets. So when looking at the GEE, uh, resolve to save lives, so resolve to prevent epidemic has, has come up with a rate score. So uh, GEE is evaluating 19, um, 19 um, elements. And you have different uh, scores which are color coded. And um, resolve to prevent epidemic has further analyzed them and uh, scored them to have uh, also a readiness score at the national level. And so when you have uh, the green, uh, a green score, it means that the country is better prepared. 
So you have sustainable capacity in place and demonstrated capacity in place. When it's yellow, there is work to do. So capacity is being developed. And when it's, it's red, there is no capacity in place. And so we are targeting five countries in the sub-Saharan uh, region, which are all at the red stage. And so namely, this is uh, DRC. We have also Cameroon, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, and Mauritania. And when we want to de disaggregate, so looking at each of the 19 uh, components of GEE, the one we are looking at is National Laboratory System. And so, like I said, you have D1.2 and D1.4 that we are targeting. And so, in the first stage, we can already look at the GEE mission report because the score is there. And not only there are details about uh, the strength and weaknesses and recommendation already for uh, improvement over uh, an improvement plan. So this is looking at the overall, uh, all domain combined uh, picture at the, at the country level. Now looking more specifically at the lab system, we are using a tool developed by ASLM, which is the LabNet scorecard. It's a system uh, evaluation of laboratory network. It's assessing at the same time the individual component of the lab network, so I will come back to this, and also the functionality of the national, uh, national laboratory network and systems. It's evaluating the capacity to respond to infectious disease threat according to the global health security agenda and the international um, health regulation. And it allows also us to map existing laboratory workforce and infrastructure at the country level. And finally, we are able to identify gap and requirement uh, at the national um, level for laboratory networks. So this was presented by um, a colleague, so Dr. Uh, Masere Keita yesterday, so I, I, she, 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 she um, allowed me to reuse a, 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 a slide. And so here you have the tier laboratory networks. And those, the, the, this uh, tier network can only be functional if all core capabilities are in place. So there are nine core capabilities which have been defined, so political, legal, and regulatory uh, elements structure and organization of the tier uh, laboratory network system, coverage and rapid response, um, laboratory information management system, infrastructure, human resources, quality, biosafety and biosecurity, and priority diseases. So in the first stage, we are looking at the individual component, and then we look how they interact together and how um, functional they are. So for each core uh, capability, you have components which are being defined. And so you have, for example, for capability two, which is structure and organization, you have structure of the tier network and coordination and management. Sorry for the French, which has <laughs> slipped in there. And so each uh, component is further defined by a, a, a subset of key indicators, which can be measured. And so, like I said, it's not enough to have the individual component in place. They also have to function together. It's like a clock. I mean, you can have all the elements in place, just remove one single piece, or just one single piece getting stuck, and then the clock is not working anymore. And so, uh, depending on the score which has been assigned, you have different, what we call, maturation stage. So how, how functional is your uh, laboratory, national laboratory network? And so, just just... You don't need to, to, to remember all the, the different like, numbers of stage, but just the color code. So black, you have nothing in place, and blue, you, you have reached the highest uh, level of standards for a given capability. So how is the assessment taking place? It's, it's a combined evaluation, meaning it's also a self-evaluation and an external evaluation at uh, the same time. So we have a plenary over three days where, is the, where, where there is sorry, a national committee in place, an external evaluator. The national co committee is multi-sectoral, representative from the public sector, the private sector, also academia. Uh, we have also a one health approach. So we have uh, human health, animal health, uh, environment being represented, and we have the partners, the in-country partners. This is allowing us also to get a good idea of the funding landscape and also the activities uh, which are already uh, taking place. 
And so in order to assign a score, we have to reach a consensus with the national committee. It can be a long process, but it's a very fulfilling one. And this is what we get at the country level now. Uh, this is the type of um, outcome. So th this is high-level analysis. So for each capability and each component, we can see uh, the score. And as I said, each component is defined by a subset of indicator. But the final color is assigned by the lowest indicator. Uh, because as I said, your clock will not work if one element is not in place or one element is not functional. So this is a snapshot picture of the situation at the country level from the, from the top of the tier system to the lowest level. So this is really a composite uh, evaluation. If something is missing at the peripheral level, it will drag down uh, the score, and this will be reflected on the snapshot. Now, what do we do when we have this uh, um, analysis uh, available? We look at ways to have intervention which can help the country move forward in a very um, targeted and impactful way. So for example, here, capability tree, network coverage and rapid response, you could see that the tier network coverage, the, the, the score was black, so it's nothing in place. And actually, this was due to one single indicator not being available. The laboratory mapping data was not available. So if you cannot map your laboratory system, you're not able to evaluate it and determine how the, how, how the coverage, sorry, so not, what is the coverage of your, system, of, your, of your lab system? So in order to move this forward, we, uh, we can make the recommendation to just complete laboratory mapping. And as soon as you have the laboratory mapping uh, data available, because it's already defined what is the minimum uh, test re testing requirement at each level in that specific country, you will move straight ahead to stage four. So this is really the idea. The same here with uh, specimen sample referral system. So there were no specimen transport SOP in place, but in that specific country, the laboratory network system is really well structured. So as, lo as long as uh, you have the SOP being elaborated and being uh, printed and, and distributed, you will move uh, straight ahead to stage three. So this is how uh, the analysis is being uh, utilized to uh, provide recommendation to the country and to uh, make decision uh, about which intervention will be carried out. You can also have a regional analysis whereby different can countries can be compared. And you can also have a longitudinal analysis where you come back over time and look at the uh, evolution of, of the score over time to see if improvement is, is taking place. And once again, I'm insisting on the fact that you're looking at the functionality of the lab network. Once the scoping results are available, so so far we've done, we've completed two countries uh, out of the five. We hope to complete all five by end of April. They will be combined with evidence-based ba intervention, like I said. So we have SLAMTA, we have SLIPTA, we have the lab map uh, for the mapping. We also have PlanWise, which is a step ahead of, of lab mapping. So once you have the lab mapping information, you can use PlanWise to really improve uh, your, your network. And so we will move from a generic resolve proposal to a very customized um, proposal at the country level and an annual action plan. So it's not a one-size-fits-all uh, type of intervention. It's really a specific to the country, aiming for really impactful intervention to make a difference. And so the expected outcome at, at, at the, on the longer term is to have an improvement on the GEE score. And so our, our objective one will be to have the situational uh, analysis base and use for an evidence-based roadmap being developed for a quality management system and sample syst uh, transport system. And objective two will now move to the implementation part where we are using the evidence-based uh, strategies for uh, elaborating a strategic plan for quality management system implementation, doing SLIPTA audit, uh, train SLAMTA trainers, embedded uh, mentors within the lab. And remember, I, in that stage, we are targeting the higher level, so reference lab. 
And uh, objective three will be to do, provide uh, the mapping data to countries such that we can optimize uh, the sam sample transport system and hopefully reach a stage where we have an integrated uh, sample transport system. And lastly, as I said, the lesson learned will be shared and the challenges also will be shared with stakeholders and also among countries. So there is a virtual platform, which is the ECO platform, which is being used for mentorship, but it's also being used for uh, experience sharing. I thank you. <laughs>